terms of defining basic terminology for mirrors, converging is just a fancy word for pulling the light together to a point. And there's only one kind of mirror that will pull light together, and that's one that's what? Concave, because it's, it's dented inward. Think of it like a cave, like you're going into a cave. The technical term for spreading light out is called diverging. And um, a flat mirror spreads light out, but the one that does it effectively is one that's bulging out. That's called convex. Why would you ever want to do that? Well, you can spread light out to give you a wider field of view. It's usually what we try to do. Or you could do it for artistic effects, like disco balls, Christmas ornaments, etc. So, in terms of how mirrors are shaped, they're all part of a what in 3D? Can you tell? Part of a, what shape is this? A circle in 2D. If you look at the center of curvature, that's the center of that circle, there's a special point along there called the focal point. That's an important point. And it turns out, if you like geometry, you can prove this using uh, geometric proofs but we're not going to worry about it, but if you want to do it for extra credit. And that is half the center of curvature is what we call the focal point. So for example, let's say this circle had a uh, center of curvature that's uh, 30 centimeters, then what would the focal point be? It would just be, it would be half that, right? 15 centimeters. And the focal point is special because that's where it pulls the light together. So because of that, you can either get what's called a real image or a virtual image. In a real image, the light really comes together. And again, a converging mirror, a concave mirror, is the only one that pulls light together. All the other mirrors spread the light out. So what we want to do today is try to understand how is that light pulled together versus how it's spread out, and then that's how you can see how an image is formed. Let's take a look here at the image equation, which is uh, the mathematical tool we're going to look at to find how images are found in a mirror. Uh, so far, we've been using ray tracing techniques. We draw any two principal rays from the object to the mirror, and then we either uh, go through the focal point or through the center of curvature, depending on which principal rays we pick, to find the image. However, in real life, mathematically, it's important to be able to calculate precisely where an image is. And the image equation is simply 1 over DO plus 1 over DI equals 1 over F, where DO is the distance of the object to the mirror, DI is the distance of the image to the mirror, and F is a focal length, which is the center of curvature divided by 2. So if the uh, center of curvature of this mirror would, was 100 centimeters, then half that would be 50 centimeters for the focal length. So once we substitute in our values, we can then simply calculate exactly where any image is formed. So pretty much in a nutshell, that's the image equation. It's just plug and chug. There's a couple things that are tricky, though. The first thing is the magnification. And there's a little uh, acronym you can remember. Magnification is hi-ho equals di-do, hi-ho over di-do, where hi is the height of the image over the height of the object. So for example, when you look in a concave mirror, close inside the focal point, it's a shaving mirror or a makeup mirror. Let's say your face looks twice as big. Well then, your magnification would be simply two because the height of your image is twice as big. And the only thing that's tricky is if it comes out negative, that means it's upside down. But if it's positive, it's right side up, in which case it's going to be a virtual image because the only time you get a real image is when you're outside the focal point of a concave mirror. It comes out upside down. And then the uh, last thing about the image equation is you have to remember that for a concave mirror, the focal point is a positive focal point because it pulls light together. For a convex mirror, it's going to be negative because it spreads the light out. And for the distance of the image, it's positive if it's a real image because you're outside the focal point for a concave mirror, so like a telescope or a slide projector or a multimedia projector, but a virtual image, it comes out negative. So you're behind the mirror. The light actually diverges and your brain puts it together behind the mirror. In the case of a flat mirror or a convex mirror or for a concave mirror when you're inside the focal point. So pretty much um, in a nutshell, the mirror equation and the magnification equation can be used to locate any image with ease. The math isn't hard, it's understanding how the images are formed. That's the tricky part and that's what we're going to look at.